Hi, it's John Terry with Vision Advisors, and I want to thank you for joining me for this Insight with Vision. I am very excited to be able to talk about a topic today that many of you work in as financial professionals. You're meeting with clients, you're having conversations with them about a very important topic, and that's their kids. And as their kids are getting to move into high school or they're looking to transition into college, that big looming question comes up, how in the world am I going to pay for this? It is a major expense. And if you don't know the rules and you don't know the loopholes and you don't know the secrets that Denise is going to be sharing with you, your clients may be giving up hard earned dollars, invading investments they don't have to invade to have an opportunity to allow their children to go to college, to get the education they want, to achieve later success in life, but do so without paying a dime out of your own pocket. Now, that may or may not be a reality for you, but Denise is here to share with you how that could be a possibility. So, Denise, would you take just a minute and uh, introduce yourself to the audience, let them know who you are, and then let's get into a little bit of discussion about what you do in the college planning arena that could be very unique for the financial advisors that we work with and coach. Well, thank you, John, for having me on. I really want to let people know that this is something that is doable, not just possible, but doable for almost anyone. I was the typical high school kid and had no clue that my parents couldn't afford to send me to college. It wasn't until the summer between junior and senior year when the topic came up and my mom said, oh, no, we're not paying for college. <laughs> that's on you. That was a shock because as a high school student, I was spending every dime that I earned. Everything. I didn't think about saving money for school. I just assumed my parents were paying. And that's something that a lot of kids will do because, well, we don't talk about finances in the family. It's just not something we do, not with our kids, right? So I went on to college on the Pell Grant and I worked three jobs to make it happen. It was not easy, it was a struggle, but at the time it was kind of like a game. Can I make this work? Can I make ends meet? Can, can I get the paycheck in the bank before the check bounces, right? But fast forward 20 plus years and now I've got my own kids who are about to start high school. Well, my husband had been in corporate for 15 years and then he got laid off. Okay, I can do this. We had literally just built our dream house, the one we thought we were going to retire in. I put the house on the market. He got another job, but three months later, he was laid off again. And then the stock market crashed. And we all remember the big crash. This was way more than we ever anticipated. We had a little bit left in the stock market, a little bit left in that 401k and a little bit in savings. And what we had left, we paid our bills on time every month, hoping he would get another job, but it never came. In just a few months, the money was running out. We had just enough left to hire a bankruptcy attorney and buy a lawnmower and a trailer and start mowing lawns to put food on the table. Now the bankruptcy was liquidation. If you could touch it, it was sold. This was way more than the typical garage sale that we had had in the past. This was having strangers come into my home and make an offer on the pot I was cooking my dinner in. But we got through it. And the house went into foreclosure. The cars were not ours anymore. And a friend of ours gave us an old truck to pull the trailer and lawnmower on. But a few months after this, I'm sitting in our little apartment with my kids realizing, oh my gosh, my daughter is starting high school. College is around the corner. How are we going to pay for this? We have no savings. We have no 401k to borrow against, no house to borrow equity from. Oh, yes, that bankruptcy, 
that means we can't co-sign for those student loans everyone loves to talk about. See, they forget to mention that your kid can only get a small amount of student loans on their own. Mm -hmm. The rest, that's you. So with this moment of panic, I started doing the research. And I realized that Okay, 70% of college students graduate with some amount of student loan debt from $5,000 to as many zeros as you want to put on it. Mm -hmm. But I can do the math, John. If 70% are graduating with debt, that means 30% are graduating debt free. What are they doing that the rest of us don't know about? What are they not telling us? So in my research, I found out that there are strategies, there are things that these kids and families are doing that goes completely against what we have been told for the last three decades that is part of the high school to college process, literally doing the opposite of what everyone else believes to be true. So with my own kids, I put into practice anything that I felt might have an effect on college admissions and scholarships. So when my daughter was a high school junior, she applied to her first national scholarship. This was a scholarship for $10,000, and she won. At the same time, she applied to her first university. I figured, well, you know, she had decent grades and not perfect test scores at all, but decent. And this is a school that just lets you check the boxes to which semester you were going to start. I figured nothing was going to change in six months. You might as well go ahead and start applying. And she did. Three days later, we got a call from the university saying, we received your daughter's application, but did not receive the application fee. Now, John, I'm going to pause for a moment because my brain immediately went, great. That's following directions, which she did not do. <laughs> and then the gentleman continues. And we'd like to offer her tuition, fees, room, board, and books. But we need the fee to process the scholarship. I'm not jumping up and down for joy just yet because I'm convinced he made a mistake. So then I asked, you do know she's a junior. He replied, yes, ma'am, we'll wait for her. There was something in this application package that we had created that had them sit up and take notice. My daughter applied to eight colleges across three states, both public and private, and heard similar things. Matter of fact, one of the colleges she turned down called to ask, what can we do to get you to come here? Because they had already planned for her to be on their campus. They saw, they envisioned the impact that she would make. Why? What, what was different about this? Well, we repeated the process with my son. And in the end, between two kids, they won 17 scholarships, totaling $199,000, and attended college debt-free with cash left over. They got paid to go to college. So what was different about this? I asked my daughter, I said, what did we do, what did we do differently? She said, it's the difference between Six Flags and Disney World. They both have the same components. Rides, food, entertainment. But Disney does two things differently. Marketing and storytelling. And that's the difference in what we created. We're marketing your teen to the college for admissions and scholarships. We're telling the story of who they are. And this is why colleges sit up and take notice. The money is a bonus. 
but it's a really good one. <laughs> so, so Denise, I think about financial advisors that we work with and that we coach, that they're working with clients. And as they're doing their financial planning, many of them are doing the, you know, the traditional college planning route. They're either putting money in life insurance they're going to borrow against. They're looking at using some type of 529 college savings plan. They're considering a Coverdale ESA. Uh, they're checking into all of the student loans because that's all you hear anymore. If you go into college, get a loan and you can pay for it later. Well, right. I can tell you that the parents don't realize what you've said is that they oftentimes end up on the hook for a significant amount of those dollars. And as a result of that, if the kids can't get a job or they get a job that doesn't pay enough for them to even live on, much less repay the debt, then mom and dad become the debt repayment plan of choice, and it ends up taking away from their opportunity to save for a successful retirement. And 100%. so what you're telling is by being able to bring someone like you into the conversation to work with those families, to have an opportunity to help them see a different way to plan to send their kids to college, they don't have to go to raid the 401k. They don't have to pledge it as collateral. They don't have to turn around and pony up a significant amount of money. They don't have to go into debt or see their kids go into debt or both. It's a different way to plan. It is. And it, it, it the thing that I have found too is that, yes, there are parents who luckily and they have financial advisors that they've been using from the get-go. And maybe they have saved, maybe they have invested enough and they have a plan for college. We didn't have that plan, although we thought about it every few years, but we never put any money aside. But even for those who did, whether you own a business and you say, we've, we've got this, we're going we're gonna to cover it, no problem. Wouldn't you rather give your kid a house at graduation instead of paying for a piece of paper? I mean, there's just so many opportunities, not just for the child, but for the parents when we dropped my son off at college, we bought a 42-foot motorhome and went full-time RVing for the next five years. It, you live a different life. Your kids live a different life. And there are opportunities. I, I know one of the myths that I hear a lot is, well, my kid's not a genius. Only geniuses win scholarships. Well, I'm here to let you know that the majority of children who win scholarships have between a 2.4 and a 2.6 GPA. It's not the geniuses. Average kids are winning. But you have to know that this is possible. And don't wait until the last minute. Scholarships begin as early as kindergarten for college. The money is out there. You just have to know how to find it, and how to win it. So, Denise, if I've got a financial advisor that's working with a client that has children, optimum age to start having conversation with someone like you, are we talking 8th, ninth, 10th grade? What's, what's the optimum time to begin that conversation so you've got the time to do the planning and explore the options? For what I do, for helping families plan the high school years so that colleges will sit up and take notice, the optimal time to have at least one 30 minute to an hour discussion is sometime in middle school. You know, back when I was in college and, and high school, we used to tell families, you know, when you when your kid starts high school, hit the ground running, join every club there is and figure it out as you go wheel it down each year. And then by the time they hit senior year, they'll have a leadership role in something that they enjoy. We had this jack of all trades idea of what colleges were looking for. Well, both of those are no longer true. Back in the day, college admissions, your applications were submitted spring of senior year. Mm -hmm. January through March, that's when everybody got their applications together and sent them in. That's when the deadlines were. But although colleges still accept applications that late in the game, 
if you're interested in scholarships, those scholarship deadlines are early in senior year, which means that whole thing about figuring out what you're going to do and eventually ending up with a leadership role, all of that needs to be backed up into middle school. College applications open October, I'm sorry, August 1st every year. Your kid hasn't even stepped foot into their senior year yet. How are they going to put senior year leadership roles on their application? So you've got to back that up. We've got to start this process in middle school. So at least have a conversation in middle school so we can get the ball rolling, get you started on the right track for your kids. So a question I know it's immediately going to come to mind from some of our advisors. I've got parents that their kids are already past middle school. They're in seventh grade, eighth grade. They're in the ninth grade getting ready, really starting high school in the ninth grade. Is it too late then? John, there are there's money all the way through undergrad, graduate school, and professional school. It is never too late to get started. The money is out there. But don't wait because the vast majority of the money, the earlier you start, the more opportunities your child will have. So between middle school, late middle school, seventh, eighth grade, ninth, 10th grade, that is the ideal time to get started because you still have time to fix what might be missing. Unfortunately, our high school counselors and our society keeps telling people, wait till senior year for that. Mm -hmm. So the vast majority do come to me, even as high school seniors. Is it too late? And eh, not too late, but you have left a lot of money on the table. Mm -hmm. So what about the older student? They went to high school, they completed high school, they said, college isn't for me. They went out and they got the nine to five job that they were going to go be an actor, they were going to be a musician, you know, they went off and chased their dream, only to find out their dream was either a pipe dream, or they didn't have the skill set necessary to, to go be the next influencer in the world. Reality hits them and they realize, I've got to develop some skills and I need to get some additional education to go make money in life. What about those kids that are in their early 20s, mid 20s, or midlife career in your 30s? What about those opportunities in college planning with what you do? Absolutely, John. There is money for everyone, literally, even for adults returning to school. Now, it's not nearly as much as it is for entering freshmen as high school seniors, but there is still money out there. I have a parent who is a single mom, and she came on with me for her son who was going into college. Her son entered college on multiple scholarships and he won't even accept groceries from his mom. He says, mom, I don't need it. He's got enough money, which is freaking awesome. But then she tells me something else. She said, six months after my son started college, I decided to go back to school. John, she has so many scholarships that her extra scholarships are building her emergency fund. Nice. This is doable. Nice. So what's the process, Denise? I've got a financial advisor that says, I've got clients that need help in this area so that we can preserve assets for other planning needs that they have. What's the process for connecting with you? How do you work with the advisor and the client? What does that look like? The best way to do it is via a three-way introduction. Introduce me to your clients via email or if everybody's on the same social media, whatever it may be, just so that we have an opportunity to connect. At that point, I'll get on a call with the clients and find out a little more about their family, about their goals for their children, and let's see if it's a good fit. I do have several different opportunities at different price points to help families in all different areas of life. Excellent. So for someone to reach out and connect with you, we, of course, can introduce them if they reach out to us here at Vision and happy to make that introduction. But if they want to reach out directly to you to make that connection, what's the best way for them to connect with you, Denise? Uh, you can reach out to me uh, through my website at getaheadoftheclass.com. That's getaheadoftheclass.com. Or you can email me at denise at de getaheadoftheclass.com. I love that website and I love the name because it's an opportunity to really get ahead in life. And we know that 
as we gain education and insight, we develop the skill set that allows us to be more successful in life. And being able to do that and not following the traditional model uh, that doesn't work. And one of the things I, I do with financial advisors is I teach them to think outside the box because traditional planning and what we've always heard to be true, traditional wisdom isn't always the best wisdom. And just because, you know, Billy went to school on loans and he got a good job, but now Billy's having to pay back $35,000, $50,000 worth of debt, you know, how much opportunity did he lose to be able to save for the financial future because he borrowed from his future to pay for the present and now he's playing catch up. And what you're doing is truly allowing them to get ahead of the class, not having to steal from their future, but being able to take the money today and invest that money for long-term success and not only have to borrow the money, but pay it back with interest that makes it cost so much more. Absolutely. One of the things that I discuss in my TEDx talk is that today students are taking 21 years to pay off their student loans. Now, even if they only took 10 years, the average student loan, the average student graduates with a loan of just a little bit better than $30,000. Now to you and me, John, that's a car note, no big deal. But to a kid coming out of college, getting his first job at age 22 or so, that's a crud load of money. Yeah. But well, if they did not have that debt, mm -hmm. if they're not paying on that loan for even 10 years and they invest it, mm -hmm. if you work the numbers, just the average interest in investing that's $2.8 million at retirement, more than those who are paying that debt. And so those that are paying that debt, that's $2.8 million lost on a $30,000 loan. Yeah. Yeah. And the oh financial gosh. advisors that are listening to this replay that we're sharing get that. And the opportunity yeah. to bring that insight and that wisdom to their clients is huge. Incredibly yeah. huge. So get ahead of the class.com. Get that right? Correct. Get ahead of the class.com. This is where you're going to find Denise, an incredible lady. She and I have been in and out of some networking events together, and I've been trying to get her on an opportunity to have a podcast so that I could share this with all the financial advisors that we work with and that we coach. Uh, Denise is an incredible resource. I've had an opportunity to spend a little time with her in some breakout rooms. A wonderful lady who is very passionate about this, very knowledgeable about this topic, and someone that will serve your clients and your customers at the highest level. So, Denise, I want to say thank you for taking some time to be with us on this podcast today. Any parting comments that you want to share as we get ready to wrap up? Thank you, John. Your families need to understand that college doesn't have to be a debt sentence. Give your kids the right start in life. And for those parents, oh my gosh, you know that if they take out $100,000 in their investments to pay for one child at a state college, that one child is costing them $800,000 at retirement. That's real money. That's right. And in this day and age, we're living longer than ever before. We're going to need to save as much as we can for retirement. Because once you get to retirement, what you saved is what you're going to live on for the rest of your lives. So I love what you're doing and the fact that you're creating a unique opportunity for getting great education for your kids or for themselves, but also the opportunity not to have to leverage their future to do so. Denise, thank you for your time today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for this podcast. We appreciate you being with us. We always welcome the opportunity. If you have questions, reach out to us here at Vision Advisors, 1-800-505-8489. And we welcome an opportunity to introduce you to Denise and get an opportunity to learn what she can do to be a valuable resource to your team. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.